Our next guest, a female, a young, fired up conservative. She loves talking politics. Joining me now, host of her very own entertaining podcast, uh, Poplytics, I believe it's called. She's also a contributor for Turning Point Action, trying to get the conservative vote out. Joining me now, Alex Clark. Hey, Alex, how are you? Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Did I get that right? Is it Poplytics? Is that the name of the podcast? Poplytics. Like Poplytics. Po uh, pop culture and politics there we combined. Go. I got it. It's a tough name to say, but I watched a few <laughs> clips. Fun, informative, and good for not only female voices, but the younger voices. And that's something you've been doing with Turning Point Action, is trying to get out that young vote, right? Yes, so actually Turning Point Action is a sister organization to Turning Point USA. They run Students for Trump, and I actually have helped volunteer here in Arizona to knock doors for Senator Martha McSally and Donald Trump. Over 10,000 doors we have knocked, um, been face-to-face, -face, shaking hands with voters, and I'm telling you, people here in Arizona are fired up for Trump and McSally. One really cool thing is that two weekends ago, I went to a Trump parade here. It was over 90-something uh, miles long across Arizona of just straight-up Trump supporters, so excited, flying their flags on their cars, just up and down the highways. Um, it was unbelievable. I, I, I almost think it might have been the most packed Trump parade that we've had in the country. So uh, I'm excited for Arizona to maybe be re stay red and go for Trump. Yeah, they keep talking the last couple of weeks that Arizona could be one of those battleground states that could shift. I, I got a hard time with that. I really don't think, I know that they've had a lot of California transplants move into Arizona along with Nevada and tons in Texas, and that's why they say that. Nevada, we've seen go either way, but it's been quite a while, if ever, that I can think of, uh, or never, right? That Arizona has ever flipped blue? It's been a while. Yeah, and you know, what I'm thinking, too, is with all of these people, if they are leaving California, especially this year in this pandemic and with everything going on and with, you know, uh, Mussolini and all of these things going on in California, I'm hoping that if they are coming here to Arizona, it's because they are sick of these left-wing policies and they want a difference, so they're not going to vote blue. I mean, that's the only thing that we can pretty much pray for at this point, but I know that I just moved here a little over a year ago, and one of the first things that I noticed when I moved here was how conservative it was. I had just gone to the post office and saw multiple people in MAGA hats. So people in Arizona love Trump. So I, I, I'm very excited for tomorrow night and feeling really hopeful. And you moved from the Golden State. What area? Oh, I didn't move from California. I moved here from Indiana, actually. Oh, so. okay. I thought you went from one extreme to <laughs> more normal lifestyle. Uh, no, but, I did not. I would, and and now you know, I've always loved California, but there is no way in hell I would ever move there at this point. Well, if Biden gets in, you make any decent amount of money, you won't be able to afford to live in the damn state anyway. So, yeah, I mean, we saw you saw the tax structure, sixty some percent in certain areas of Cali, like L.A. County, and I mean. Who wants to give up over half their paycheck to a bunch of socialist programs and free, free, free stuff for illegals and kids when everybody else that's my age and up have been busting our hump for decades to get what we have? I, I just can't imagine people will go that way. Uh, what has Turning Point been doing, and, and you personally, to make sure you get that young vote out? Because that's something that Democrats on this election, of course they say it every two, four, six years, that they do the best at getting the young vote and the college vote out. I don't know about that this time around. Yeah, so Turning Point Action has actually every single Saturday leading up to the election been in a different battleground state hosting what's called Super Saturdays and um, helping elect local people there in those areas and then also getting people registered and amped to vote for President Trump, making sure that they're going into what should be historically predominantly Republican neighborhoods and just getting them amped, like, hey, you are going to the polls, right? Because a lot of times you have that, you have people that are like, oh yeah, I'm a Republican, but are they actually registered? You know, are they ready? Are they actually going to to show up have they turned in you know whatever they're supposed to be turning in and so we've been doing that all over the country um and registering thousands and thousands of young voters especially so uh we're feeling very very confident in that effort we're actually the only youth effort that um has been working to register young kids for trump specifically alex have you been um, a victim like thousands upon thousands of conservatives when it comes to social media blocking you or suppressing you I'm sure you have. Fill us in. 
actually the very, very beginning of us launching politics on Instagram, I noticed after a couple weeks that we were losing a lot of views. Um, my followers, likes, everything started dropping. So I had Turning Point look into it. Um, and because, you know, we have Charlie Kirk and he's really good friends with everybody over at Instagram and Facebook and Facebook runs Instagram. And so um, we reached out and they said, oh, actually, politics has been blacklisted. We're not sure how that happened. <laughs> must have been a mistake we thought you were spam we'll take you off yeah. so yes that did happen to us um they admitted it that we were on something called a blacklist but then magically everything was fine and we haven't had any issues since fingers crossed but um of course facebook admitted that in leading up until the election and the results are in they're going to be blocking a lot more content and stuff like that lately so i have seen on facebook just a so much more censorship than normal like a meme of 50 cents face yes. on donald Trump, they're like, this image has been altered. We I'm had like, that on last week. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs a fact check on that? It's a meme. It's supposed to be funny. People get it. Funny Americans are, are smart enough, Instagram and Facebook. We don't need to be Vote told it's Trump. not real. <laughs> Vote for Trump to free the memes. <laughs> yeah, please. Free the social media so we can say and speak and do what we want online like we could up until a few months ago. And obviously they've been doing this for the last couple of years, but it is really, they have turned it up in the last couple of weeks. Um, Alex, you know how it goes. They're giving me the hard rap. We got to go. Poplitics. I love it. Where do we find it? This is on Instagram. It's on Instagram. Follow Poplitics on Instagram. We post every single weekday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, covering pop culture from a conservative perspective. Awesome. I love it. Alex Clark, thank you so much for joining Real America. Be safe. If you haven't done so, get out and vote. And uh, let's have you back on the show a few days after all this dust settles. I'd love to. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Straight ahead after the break, uh, she's a mother with a mission, and that is to help President Donald J. Trump get reelected. Stick around for our Patriot Report coming up next.